Wonderful. Awesome. It is another Monday. It is a glorious Monday. And you are with us on today's woman COPU as the radio. Elder Sam is at Texas. I saw him with this cowboy hat trying to give us a Texas, you know, <laughs> Texas tone. And I was like, look, you cannot. But, you know, it's good seeing him looking all Texan right there. And congratulations to Elder Chris uh, Tofi, Mr. Chris Tofi, on the book. We're gonna have a great time today, so call a friend and stay tuned. We are about to continue from our discussion of last week. Last week we were talking about inner circles. I had so many feedbacks and you know people asking so many questions, so it was good. And today we are looking at the SWOT strategy. We are gonna come from the SWOT analysis as people know it, even for organizational purposes and make it very applicable to our daily lives. And as always, I have my wonderful, wonderful first ladies here with me and we're going to do justice to that topic. And of course, this weekend was a phenomenal weekend. So I want to say congratulations to <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Now, you know, and so uh, So our national first family, COP USA, and the international first family, um, Apostle Eric Nyamiche and Mama Mary Nyamiche were blessed to have the solemnization of the marriage of their sons and their daughter. I saw Mama Doris, her fascinator was something else. I saw Mama Abigo too, she was looking gorgeous. Everybody was looking phenomenal. I saw Mama Sheila, I said, wow, everybody just amped it up. So Mama Doris, <laughs> I need to come and see you for that fascinator. I was like, no, I need her to hook me up. <laughs> So congratulations, Deaconess Stephanie and Elder Anson. We pray that God will bless your union so always and forever. So First Lady Harriet Okusi is here with me as usual, District First Lady for Tennessee, married to Reverend Benjamin Okusi, blessed with three boys and a girl, has worked in the accounting field, uh, loves youth, empaths, and women empowerment issues. First Lady Harriet, we are blessed to have you. Welcome again to Today's Woman. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here with you all. May God bless you. Amen. God bless you too. And off to Hawaii. Yeah, first lady, Dora Berry J in the house, married to Reverend Dr. Berry J, located in Hawaii, you know, first uh, family over there, also works with kids with behavioral issues, also a mother of, you know, three awesome kids and authored or uh, co-authored books with her husband and their current book is the preacher's foundation first lady dora it's a blessing to have you you are welcome again to today's moment thank you so much it is a blessing to be on the program and just so you know i'm still in chicago enjoying chicago oh wow Mm -mm. things are happening in chicago <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy 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 and we are off to the UK. First Lady Dr. Mrs. Grace Ascentib, you're married to a pastor and as dear. He's the minister in charge of Graceland, PRWC, COP UK. They're blessed with two children. Also, she works in obstetrics and gynecology at the Birmingham Women's you know, Hospital. She's a specialty doctor there and also concerned about youth issues and has co authored, uh, has authored singularly the book Can God Interrupt Your Life. First Lady Dr. Grace, it's a blessing to have you again. You're welcome. Thank you very much. As always, I'm very privileged to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, too. And we have also Jenny to Ghana. More Doris is still fresh, you know, from the wedding euphoria because she's still looking <laughs> very elegant. And we have Mama Doris Otunyaku, our wife of Apostle Lawrence Otunyaku. He is the fad in charge of the finances globally of the Church of Pentecost across board. And Mommy here also is a mother of six. <laughs> Powerful there, right there. And she loves women empowerment issues three times. She She's been the host of the Women on Fire conference. She has an MBA from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, and professionally, she's lectured right now at uh, now KTU, KTU University, formerly K Poly. Mordors, you're looking elegant once again. You're welcome to today's woman. 
Thank you so much for having me. A great time to learn once again. Thank you so much. Thank you too. And mommy dearest, you can tell from her hair that she's still enjoying the sophistication of the wedding as well. I saw mommy and she was looking mm, mm, with Apostle also beside her. And I caught a moment where they were whispering something to each other. I'm yet to contact mommy to tell me what Apostle was telling her. But you know, I think Mrs. Bethe and Nietzsche was telling me that Apostle was remembering her of their word. <laughs> <laughs> we have our mommy, Dr. Mrs. Abigail Che. She has lectured at the Painting Girls University since 2014. Currently, she's the head of Department of Nursing and Midwifery at the Painting Girls University. Also, on the national front in Ghana, Dr. Mrs. Abigail Che is the president of the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives. She has been married, I told you, over three decades. And she was looking bomb at the wedding <laughs> over there. Our mommy here also is married to Apostle Professor Peter Hiniche. He's also a past rector of the Pentecost University and also a retired apostle of the Church of Pentecost. They are blessed with five children and four grandchildren. Mama Abigail, mommy dearest, you're welcome again to today's woman. Thank you very much. And thank you everybody for your support of this great wedding um two favorite children of ours got married and we are so happy about it and we thank god for every person we pray yeah. that it will be a blessing for every marriage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. how bless you god bless you mommy you, you are so right I, I i took advantage of the season i told my husband i said still fresh you know when when, <laughs> when when you see something beautiful somebody said when you see a soup that is smelling nice please go get out your bowl i said honey let's get our bowl and tap into the atmosphere it's a blessing mommy god bless you so much you know last week we were talking about inner circles and so many people reach out to us to say that that was an interesting twist so mommy's god bless you so much you are impacting lives and today we want to continue on that projection to look at the SWOT analysis as so many people know it and use it as a strategy to build our lives Mama Abigail, i'm going to the dictionary and when you look at we, we, we the SWOT analysis talks about strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats but for the sake of our time today we'll focus on the strengths and weaknesses and god willing next time we'll look at the other dimensions so today we want to focus on strengths we want to focus on weaknesses so if you go to the dictionary it has so many you know aspects of the word strength it has so many aspects of the word you know uh weaknesses but Looking at the background, for those of you who are joining us and you're like, what is this SWOT thing? Looking at the background, there's so many, you know, researchers out there, but um, I was looking at A-Frame, Bonajimai, Michael Nisan, Ansa, and Kwame Bryafanu. They, they did this, uh, you know, article on nuclear energy for sustainable development. And they, I liked it because they are Ghanaian authors and they looked at it in doing the SWOT analysis and they had something to say. And, you know, even as we are starting, we want to look at what they, they were looking at. They said the SWOT analytical tool is a tool for evaluating the strengths and weaknesses of an intended project as well as the opportunities and the possible threats that a project could face. So they are looking at it from the organizational perspective. Now, I'm going to have go just looking at what other people are thinking. I just wanted to narrow it down to our personal views. If you could go ahead, Mami, and tell us when you are thinking about first the SWOT analysis or strengths and weaknesses, if you can help us define and distinguish somebody says what are, are we talking about just a uh, basic distinction would help us mommy thank you um as you rightly said the SWOT analysis was basically it basically evolved from the organizational point of view but from what we are discussing i want to look at it in the personal lives of people how we go about issues and how we grow up how we develop Mm. We all have our strengths and we all have our weakness. And the strengths are the things that we, um, we work with, that we are good at, that help us to 
catapult to the level that give people make people see us in a good light. Mm. Our mm. weaknesses are the things that um, bring us down, mm-hmm. and everybody has a weakness. But <laughs> no, I mean, hold on one minute. Could you please repeat that? Did you generalize just like that, mommy? Um, I'm not generalizing. I'm stating a fact that everybody has a weakness. Okay. Mommy, please, uh, there's something you, you, could you please repeat that? And I want us to take that in. Mama Abigail, Dr. Mrs. Abigail Che, please, did you just say everybody has a weakness? Everybody has a weakness. Everybody has a strength. Thank you. We all have weaknesses. We all have a strength. But most of the time, we focus on our strengths and we want people to see us in our strengths more than our weaknesses. And mm. we make excuses for our weaknesses. Mm. But the moment we come to the realization that we are human and because of that, we are not uh, flawless, mm. we have our weaknesses, we can, with the help of the Holy Spirit, turn our weaknesses into strengths. Mm. Because at the end of the day, God wants us to come to him, perfecting us as we go along mm-hmm. the level that he wants us to do. He has a plan for everybody and he has a purpose for everybody. So our strengths are the things that make us do well, mm-hmm. the things that we feel good about, mm-hmm. the things that other people see and admire us about. Our strength can also be things that some people may not easily um, find it. They, they don't find it easy to um, accept because they make us stand out in ways that bring their weaknesses out. But that notwithstanding, we all have our strengths. And it is important that you get to know what your strengths are. Some people are very strong in the way they go about um, telling people, I mean, making people feel good. Some people are very good at the way they present issues to people. And some people are very good at the way they make others feel very comfortable. All those are strengths. But if you don't take care, you will listen to what people are telling you, and then you think that your strengths, they criticize your strengths in such a way that they make you feel like this is not a strength. Mm. This is something that I should do something about. But it is important that everybody sits down to have a fair assessment of ourselves to know what our strengths are. Mm. The things that make us feel good, the things that we admire in ourselves mm-hmm. the things that we are comfortable with. Those mm. strengths. Now, when it comes to weaknesses, as I said, that everybody has strengths and everybody has weaknesses. We know our weaknesses. Most of the time, we know our weaknesses. If we are go- if we are willing to be honest with ourselves, we'll be able to tell ourselves that this is a weakness. Mm. Maybe when I when I, I say things, the way I say it and the way it comes across to people, okay. it doesn't sit well with them. And therefore, I'm always getting into trouble. Why have you said that? Mm-hmm. Why have you said that? Mm-hmm. Maybe I should look at the way I go about it. Okay. So people can say the same thing in a way that one will be embraced and another one will be sacked. So we have to know our weaknesses. And then when we don't, even when we are not sure about our weaknesses, It is important that we ask the Holy Spirit to help us know our weaknesses. And as we allow him to work along with our weaknesses and help us come out. So I want it, I mean, I I want to come out with this practical aspect of the SWOT analysis, not looking at it the organizational way, but looking at it personally within our personal lives. Uh All right. That's how I would like to look at it. Thank you so much. Very in-depth look at it. Very, very practical, very, very personal. But one thing that really uh, was interesting for me to note is the boldness, Mama Abigail, for you to tell us 
everybody has weaknesses. That's very, very great. I'm going to table it down even as we continue further to talk about uh, this, you know, discussion. But one thing that mommy said also that was very interesting to me is that sometimes people will criticize your strength. And if you're not careful, it may come to you as though that is a weakness. They will try to put you down. I'm going to table that for further discussions. More Doris, even as we are looking at the overview, based on overview of this very interesting topic, based on what Momo Abigo has said, it's interesting to know what you also think about the SWAT strategy. So the SWOT analysis, as you already said, was I think it was Albert Humphrey in 1960, the 60s, he propounded the theory mm -hmm. and it's basically evaluation. Mm -hmm. So then we can use this, not only in uh, organizations, we can also use it to evaluate ourselves, to yeah. know where we are, what we can do and where we are going. Mm. So it's good that we do the thing. So strength, and you know, they took the SWOT as strength, our weakness, our opportunities and threats. Mm -hmm. And they divided it into two. The strength and the weaknesses are uh, the internal ones, those that we have control over. Mm -hmm. Then the opportunities and threats are the things that are coming from outside, outside to yes, hit us. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so once we are able to differentiate, then we can work on our strengths and our weaknesses to oppose the, um, the opportunities and the threats. So if you take it from where Mama Abigail let said, some people can criticize you. It's a threat. Mm -hmm. So if you know your strength and people are criticizing you, then you know that it's your strength that they are tackling. So you wouldn't allow the awareness to get at you so that you deviate from your strength. I want us to have that then noted that mm -hmm. it's a threat and you should use your strength to oppose it. What is strength? Strength is anything within your reach that gives you a competitive advantage or a leverage above others. Mama Doris, could you please, Mama for, Doris, please, could you explain what is a competitive advantage, please? <laughs> competitive advantage is um, it's a business term that we use in business. It's like when you are into competition with somebody, not necessarily, but maybe you are trading, the, doing something that another person is doing. Mm -hmm. But when you are able to outdo the others, it means you have a competitive advantage. Okay. Just having a leverage above somebody or mm -hmm. doing something better than somebody. Okay. That is your strength. And you can, you, can, you can get it from the resources that you have, from your talents, from your skills, from your social network. So now we should begin to have networks. They are also a source of strength. For your, your personality traits, Mama Abigail was saying that others, people know how to talk. People are orators. Mm -hmm. You say the same thing, but when they say it, it acts up. People understand it better. Okay. It's a strength. And your, your exposure, when somebody is exposed, well exposed, and the person is talking, you know that this is a strength. Yes. Mm. Then your level of education. Okay. Your level of education also counts, yes. If you are, maybe you do like BSc admin, you do it to the first level, mm. you do SWOT analysis. When you do the second degree, you understand it's better. Okay. So if two people, yes, who have done business admin and they are talking about SWOT analysis, the one with the PhD or the master's can take it further. Mm. So, so your level of education is your strength. Yeah. Then your experiences that you've had, experiences that you have, you've been exposed to so many things. Mm. Once you've been exposed to them, it adds up to your experiences and to your knowledge and to your skills. That makes you competent mm. and nobody can I mean, bring you down. Mm. Okay, so all these uh, competences are there for you to draw on and it adds up to your strength. Okay. Anytime that you want to do something because you have the knowledge, you have the skills, you can easily do it and you'll be on top. People will just like to admire you. 
Strength is anything that you do that people will sit down and say, wow, this thing that the person did is just excellent. So when you hear people telling you that, no, oh, this thing that you did or the way you put it or the way you said it or the way you moved is so superb, they know that they are talking about your strength. Strengths are integral parts of our, our, our lives as individuals, whether you're a Christian or you are a, a, an unbeliever. When you have that strength, which is not the physique that we are talking about, but the other things that we are talking about, it's an integral part of you because these are the things that will launch you into the world, you see. So, and the other side, you do things with that, that, that thing that is your strength, you do it without stress. You do it without any pressure. Mm. You understand, even when you are asleep and they call you, you can explain yourself. Okay. These are all your strength. So then what is a weakness? A weakness is anything that you are unable to do well. Mm. The lack of ability, the lack of competence okay. is a weakness. Anything that you do, like all you are going to do that you feel so much stressed out. Mm. It, it comes out with fear and agitation and all those things. They are, they are, they are your weaknesses. All okay. things that you do, and people will say that, oh, as for this year, you didn't do well at all. Mm. Then you should know that they are your weaknesses. So all that we are saying, and Mama Abigail said, it's a fact. I'm adding that it, the truth is that <laughs> all human <laughs> the truth is that once you have this body you have your strength mm. and you have your weakness mm. and it is god in his own wisdom who created us and he knows that we are weak he knows our strength so all that we want to say is that don't let anybody use your weakness to bring you down Mommy, can you repeat that again, please? Yeah. Even your weakness, don't let anybody use it to bring you down. Awesome. <laughs> because people are, are masters when it comes to bringing people down. Even your strength, they want to tackle it. How much less or more your weakness? Mm -hmm. They will say it and say it and say it. And sometimes you feel even so bad that you can go into depression. It's a nice topic and I wish a lot of people will listen to us because most people have started certain things and one comment that somebody passed has taken that person into a coverage. It's not mm. coming out, mm. you see. Some people are um, perfect. Mm -hmm. They think they are perfect. So they always look out for the weaknesses of people and dwell so much on it that mm. they don't praise people. Okay. But the truth is that we all have strength. We all have weaknesses. So know your strength and enhance it mm -hmm. and work on your weakness so okay. that you'll be perfect in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. It's very amazing just listening to Mama Abigail and just listening to Mama Doris. And one thing that Mama Doris, you said that is interesting is Mama Abigail said, it's a fact. Everybody has a weakness. Mama Doris said, it's the truth. Everything. All humans have a weakness and everybody has a strength. And then she says, do not let anyone, you know, somebody says, and I emphasize anyone. <laughs> to use your weakness to put you down. Thank you so much. Great overview so far. Presently, Dora, I could just tell that as soon as <laughs> Mama, <laughs> Mama Abigail was saying people criticize your strength, I saw you. And when Mama <laughs> Doris also said, don't let anyone to use your weakness, I saw you. So I'm interested in what you are thinking. Presently, Dora, go for it. Thank you so much. Um... Yes, I was I was smiling to that because it's so true mm. that you know people see what is your strength and they try to capitalize on that mm. in any in any negative way that um, they can use it. And the reason why I was smiling to that because it's because um, I know that I'm not a quiet person. I love to speak my mind, and um, you know sometimes within our culture, you know when especially when in the midst of of men and you speak your mind, you are, you are seen as something else. So just 
hearing them say that, that's why I was, I was laughing, you know, over that. Mm. Um, so I believe what our mothers have said is, is very true. Um, my definition of, of strength is just the ability to, to do things or get things done. Mm. And it comprises of all the qualities that makes you be able to do those things. Mm -hmm. uh, an example is a boxer uh, shows your strength mm -hmm. in the punches that they, they throw out there against your opponent. That's right. You know, a mathematician is known to be strong based on how they are able to solve math problems. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say that um, strength is basically tied to performance. Okay. Um, weaknesses, on the other hand, is just the opposite of strength. You know, okay. what we've talked about, it, it, um, it encompasses limitations to the things that you can't do. Okay. And so with that said, I would like to just throw out there that um, strength and weaknesses are all contextual. Mm. And what I mean by that is, is, is that um, one may be a strength mm -hmm. in one situation uh -huh. and become a weakness yes. in another situation. Okay. And an example that comes to mind is uh, the ability of uh, the ability, or, or I should say, the inability to show emotion for a mm. soldier during war? It's strength for them. Mm. Now, if you bring that same thing to marriage, uh -huh. it's a weakness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you know uh, when you look at uh, uh, the uh, analytical, if you have somebody who is very uh, analytical. As a manager, it becomes a strength. That's right. Now, with our walk of faith, when you become so analytical, it becomes a weakness because mm -hmm. of the way God deals with us. Yeah. And the story that comes to mind is the advisor to the king. You know, when Elisha said, tomorrow by this time, you know, food will be in abundance. Mm -hmm. Of course, the advisor was analyzing things. How on earth? Yes. Even if God should open the windows of heaven, it's not mm -hmm. going to be possible. Mm -hmm. But... You know, if as a manager, it is good. That is like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in our work of faith, it became mm. a weakness. That's so right. all these strengths and weaknesses we are talking about is all contextual. Mm. So that is why, you know, we, you cannot despise, you know, somebody's uh, strength or, you know, over somebody's weakness or uh, um, whichever way you want to put it. So that's what I want to say to that. Interesting way to look at it because when you started to talk about an, an, an analytical person, I was thinking about Abraham. You know, I find it very interesting because uh, I know yesterday Pastor was preaching, he, he talked about that. And I was just, even as the message was going, I was just thinking about something. I'm thinking, go to, <laughs> get out of your. Forever. Wherever, like, you know, no GPS, no, no roadmap, nothing like God was so specific about what he had to leave behind and very silent about what he had to go to. So I, I read that and I've heard that, but just yesterday hearing him, he was speaking about, you know, God's call and I was sitting there thinking, look, look at how you told me he should leave his family, leave his country and all that. But then where he's going and I'm thinking an analytical person is going to say, God, what are you saying? Like, where am I going? You know, but listening to you, like he said, we, we need to be analytical when we are dealing with facts and approaches to things. But then when it comes to faith, then you just have to just walk by faith. Very interesting way to look at it. God bless you so much. Presley, Jar, Dr. Grace, if you can also join <laughs> and tell us your perspective. Thank you very much. Um, I must apologize for my voice today. It's quite husky. I've been on nights on call and I think the tightness is taking itself uh, out of my voice. So I do apologize. Okay, Dr. Grace, let me tell you right there. Here comes the strength and weaknesses. Your voice sounds very, very, I don't want to use the word on here. So you see, for somebody it's a strength. I'm sure your pastor Ernest will agree with me. So right there, we have a, a dispute about what is a strength or what is a weakness, even with this <laughs> thing that you're apologizing for. Thank you very much, First Lady. I love the way you can see you know the goodness in this. Thank you. So basically, when uh, I look at the word strength, I'm looking at uh, the characteristics of an individual that allows them to be of positive impact okay. or of, of good to others mm. and to, uh, society in general. And weaknesses are those aspects uh, of our 
uh, makeup that would uh, somehow be detrimental if expressed in our relations uh, with each other. And um, the, the uh, characteristics that we all have is a complete package that we are born with, mm -hmm. like Doris intimated before. So we come as a complete package uh, we come with our temperaments, is acted on by environment and how we are nurtured and socialized. And then it would allow those positive aspects to come out uh, as we are socialized, we are taught somehow to try and put those negative aspects of what our package is under control. And so in our relationships, we try as mama be intimated to put our positive uh, aspects out, our strengths mm -hmm. out, so that we may be accepted of others and not so much our uh, 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 negative side. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to uh, what comprises these characteristics, it could be of a physical nature. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, um, when you compare a man and a woman, fiscally, a man is much stronger mm -hmm. than a woman in terms of the ability to put a, a brand force to something, to okay. be able to uh, do things uh, fiscally. But a woman could train herself up to exercise that same physical strength. So what I'm trying to say is that a strength may not always be something that is uh, 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 innate to us, something that comes to us is something that we can learn. So I may not be that good with uh, my interpersonal relationships, but I could go on courses that teaches me uh, mm -hmm. how to relate to others. And therefore I'm able to turn my personality around from somebody that is sort of an isolated, withdrawn person to somebody that's outgoing and incorporates others. Yeah. At the same time, um, the, the uh, strengths that we have could inherently complement those of others. So being able to identify those of others then allows us to play to the best of our abilities in, in terms of our interpersonal relationship um, with those. It could also be of an emotional or psychological nature um, where um, we show a certain resilience, we show uh, a certain ability to cope with situations that perhaps others might not be able to uh, uh, do. And those uh, instances then bring up that uh, positive aspect of our personality and our makeup. It, it could be of a spiritual uh, uh, nature. And I love the fact that as children of God, we are inherently built with uh, uh, power. We are sort of a power packed house. The moment he declared us able to be fruitful, able to be uh, uh, multiplying, he gave us that ability to be able to overcome our world, to be able to establish uh, uh, what we want to see uh, on the land. So strengths could come from, you know, different aspects and in the same way, weaknesses as well. And those uh, things that we identify as strengths, those things that allow us to be able to achieve the things that we should. It is good that we devote time to build it up and to make it even stronger. But in that same way, those things that we find, okay. uh, we, the things that would make us fall back and not be able to uh, have an output that is as strong as expected of us, we also need to devote time to in trying to better so that we have a full package and we are not left, you know, uh, floundering when certain situations come up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome way to look at it. Interesting, uh, you know, dynamics here where naturally we would say that the man is stronger than the woman, but you said a woman can also train and be stronger. And as you started to say that, I was like, yeah, I've seen some macho women out there, some that didn't even have to train. And you, if you're not careful, you will get what the sense of skiva even experience will not be compared to what those women will put you through. So very interesting way to look at it, Dr. Grace. God bless you so much. First lady Henrietta, you are looking very calm today. What's your secret? <laughs> Um, <laughs> no secret at all just taking all the the wisdom in and um you know our mothers have said so much and it's so true um that when we talk about um strength strength is someone's ability to do something without much strain um and um it has different dimensions our mothers have explained it to us in very different areas um strength physically spiritually emotionally and etc Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, when it comes to another thing about strength is strength, you're able to do it 
without sometimes without putting a lot of effort into it because it's mm -hmm. naturally a part of you. Mm -hmm. um, I, as our mother said, and, and it's very true that it, as individuals, we all have our strengths. We all have things that we're able to do and we're able to do without too much strain. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also, as they also said, have weaknesses. And I think um, when it comes to the analysis, it's important for us to realize that it's the main aspect of it is self-reflection. If we're looking mm -hmm. at it from an individual perspective, mm -hmm. organizations look at it from an organizational reflection, but mm -hmm. as individuals, we are looking at it more so as a, a personal reflection. Mm -hmm. And so it requires you to be honest honest with yourself mm -hmm. um, and to be real with yourself and speak the truth to yourself. Everyone wants to enjoy the, the strengths, right? Everything that we do <laughs> well, we like to talk about, but mm -hmm. when it comes to the weaknesses, we don't really put much emphasis on it. And I think it's important for us to understand that when we talk about this analysis, it's a self-reflection, our mother Abigail stated, it's a self-reflection, it's for you as an individual to look within yourself and be honest with yourself and say, mm -hmm. this is where I'm strong mm -hmm. and this is where I'm weak. And when you're able to acknowledge your weaknesses, not just allowing the weaknesses to, to be there and, in, and, and, and live in the weakness, but a, a way for you to also find ways and means to, in, to be better. Mm -hmm. Okay, because like our mother, um, Dr. Grace said that, you know, there are some people who may not have the strength or you physically you will think they don't have the strength, but they can train for it. And yeah. if you even spend time looking at the Olympics, you saw women pushing up weights that men are, are able to push up because they've trained on it. Yeah. Um, so physically, we see that, you know, we may have been born weaker. Mm -hmm. However, you can train to become stronger in certain areas. Mm -hmm. And so the weaknesses are there or the analysis of the weaknesses for us to see, okay, well, where we are falling short, what can we do to do better? Okay. And so it's important for us as individuals to have time of self-reflection. And we've put so much emphasis on it on either in, in, in previous shows as well, that as people of God, as children of God, we have to self-reflect, look within ourselves, establish our strengths, continue to build on those strengths, but then also establish our weaknesses and begin to move in a way of growth within those weaknesses. Amen. Thank you so much. That I, uh, you know, one thing that was coming across as very interesting to me was you said uh, self reflection. Mama Abigail always says, "Have a meeting with yourself." So I'm thinking that I will consider a person to be a very dangerous person who cannot tell the truth to themselves because there's no audience. You know, I was like, how would I, you know, sit with myself? And I know obviously what my strengths are, what my weaknesses are. And I would tell the lies to myself. I was like, I don't want to encounter such a person because if you cannot tell the truth to yourself with no audience, then I wonder what's going on. But you know, it brought me an interesting twist where when you go for an interview and you tell them all these nice things about yourself and then they say, okay, so what is your weakness? I'm thinking, is this a trick question here or what? How am I supposed to tell my employer my weakness and still expect to get the job? But most of the times they just want to see if you're real or you're very intuitive about yourself. So thank you so much for that dimension. Mama Abigail, after listening to everybody, I think it's clear what we have established is we have strength sometimes effortlessly. We do certain things and we have weaknesses where it's hard for us to acknowledge, but it's the fact. And I, I just heard a scenario where somebody said, as for me, because I can carry out my bread. Like if I just talk, like I can't repeat myself. I'm thinking, you, what are you talking about? We love to talk. I don't understand what you're talking about. Very interesting there. I, I was like, how do you get tired from talking? Anyway, let me move on right here. Mama Abigail, could you please let us know in, in your thoughts, what would make us strong and what would make us weak? We're looking at, you know, naturally we have established that, but what is it that makes people strong versus weak? If you could look into that for us. And I will have our viewers know that you are with us on today's woman. Forgive us, we are having a little bit of technical difficulties on streaming. All the Sam is in Texas and we are trying to hold it for it. It's tough, but we appreciate you all who are here with us. So kindly share for us today more than any other day because we have other people who might be missing out because of our peculiar situation for the day. Mama Abigail, please, if you can tell us what you think about what is it that will make us strong versus weak. Um, what will make us strong and what will make us weak depends a lot on us. Mm. You see, 
And the first thing that comes to mind is honesty. <laughs> when you are honest with yourself, you will be honest in everything that you do. A lot of us um, in this world, what I have come to realize is that the number of genuine people are not as many as, the, the number is not as many as it should be. Okay. Too many people are faking. Mm. <laughs> Too, many people, <laughs> Too many people are are wanting to be seen in a certain light. Mm -hmm. Just yesterday, I was talking with one teenager and he was looking at somebody doing something. Okay. And then he made the comment, but that's not how he normally does it. Mm -hmm. Then he said to himself, is it because of the audience around? <laughs> mm -hmm. And when he said it, I was just standing there waiting for him to, I mean, <laughs> get even with his thoughts. Then he turned to me and he said, he asked me, why do you think the person is behaving in this way? And I said, you answered it yourself. <laughs> Most of us are, are acting on a stage. Mm. Mm. And we want the audience to applaud us. And because we want the audience to applaud us, sometimes we do things that are not what we are supposed to be doing. But when you are very honest with yourself mm. and you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, you will be careful about the things that you do. Mm. And one thing I admire about people that I see as strengths in people is people who weigh matters before they take action. Okay. A lot of people say, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it that way. <laughs> Think. I mean, think. Well, as simple as that. Think. <laughs> as simple as that. Think. If we, if we think about the consequences of things, if we mm. think about how it will affect people, if mm. we think about what we are doing, a lot of the weaknesses in us will find another way out. Mm. So it's a, it's the, the way we can, we can get our strength is for us to be honest with ourselves. Okay. Be, be, be genuine. You see, mm. when Jesus told that, 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 that here is an Israeli that uh, an Israelite that in whom there is no form, mm -hmm. I was like, ah, how can he say a thing like that? Mm. But he could tell he, from what he said, he meant that this man is genuine. He is not wishy washy. He's not the type who mm -hmm. will want to please people he genuinely wants to know things mm. so the first thing about getting strength is be, to be honest mm. and it it's when we are honest that we can go to the holy spirit in sincerity and say that holy spirit here i need help mm. i always use this as an example i remember when we were called into full-time ministry I was then an expatriate in another person's land. Mm -hmm. And when you're an expatriate, you have all the, the luxury, everything. And I mean, we were really living quite well mm -hmm. over there. Then out of the blue, my husband called and said, um, I have been called, um, they called me to, how did he put it? He said, um, I was asked about coming into full-time ministry. I said, what did you say? <laughs> I accepted it. And I said, okay, then let's go. So when he said that, and I said, okay, let's go, I went on my knees after I had finished talking with him over the food. And I said, God, oh, when it comes to being a manager, being in charge, a director, and everything, I can close my eyes and do that. Mm -hmm. Because by your grace, I have learned about it. I have walked through it. 
But as for being an us of mommy, I have no clue. Mm. I have no clue how to do it. I have seen some mommies doing their work. I have seen people. I said, God, I have not gone this way before. Mm -hmm. This is a path I have never taken. Okay. I need help. Mm -hmm. And this one, I was being honest with myself because truly, truly, I have seen as of mommies doing their work. I have admired some of them. I have talked about how some people are doing their thing. But I had never walked that path. Mm. So I had no clue how to do it. Okay. And I had to accept it that, Lord, I don't know how to do this. Mm. So when we are honest in ourselves, we know where we cannot add up, Mm. where we cannot do it. And Mm. that is when you go in humility before the Holy Spirit, ask for strength and enablement to be able to do it. When Ms. of Mami Grace was talking, she said, it's not always that um, it's innate in you. Your yeah. strengths are mm-hmm. innate in you. Sometimes you have to learn them, and mm-hmm. it is true. You, there are so many times that you know that this one, I cannot do it, or I don't do it well. Mm-hmm. And you, 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 you sit there and you wonder, how do I go about this? But if you force your way through, like, oh, that's for me, I can do everything. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me without going for the strength. You mm. go and disgrace yourself. Mm. You know, when I when I tell people that whenever I'm called to mount the platform, especially in the things of God, the palpitations that I have. When I say it, people don't believe me, but I know. I get a lot of applications because I'm like, God, this one, if you don't do it, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Mm. But it comes out in a way to others that, oh, she naturally has a flair for it. But it is because I'm depending on the Holy Spirit, mm. for strength, mm. and for ability. Mm. So I think that the, the, the truth of the matter about how to get strength is to be honest with yourself mm-hmm. and to seek for support and help and direction from the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit that strengthens us. He enables us to do things that we cannot do. Mm-hmm. And the other thing about strength too is that do not be envious of another person's strength. Mm-hmm. Whatever strength God gives you, great. There are places that he will not lead you to go because that is not the path he has given to you so when you see another person with a strength that you admire yes admire Mm -hmm. and encourage the person okay but don't be envious of that strength and try to be like that person there was a situation where somebody visited me in my home and I had a lot of the youth who had come to visit because I have I had four girls to start with. So when the girls are coming, they bring their boys along with them. <laughs> and then the boys too, they are all over the place. So they come, we come to my at that time we were in, um, uh, working in an in institution. You find these people all over the place. Sometimes I just give my kitchen to them and then whatever you, I just tell them when you are leaving, leave my kitchen in the way you came and met it. <laughs> I just I just leave and leave them to do whatever. Relationships matter to me a lot. So mm. when 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 I have the youth or the old people with me and they feel at home with me, I'm very happy with it. Mm. It so happens that somebody close to us came along, saw all the people there, and, hey, how do you do it? And I said, I didn't do anything. They just <laughs> came, and I opened my doors for them. The next thing I saw was the person trying to canvas people to that, that his side. Really? So that it, yes, and I was like, and that, that thing, it really had an effect on me. And I, I sat and I thought about it. And I said, we have to be careful with the people we associate with. Mm. 
Mm. If you see something in somebody and you admire and you you do it in the way that glorifies God, mm. especially with us Christians. Mm. If you see somebody doing something that is really nice and the person is good at it, you admire it. Yes. How do you do it? The person may, be, may, may tell you. And if the person tells you, you don't go behind the person and try to outdo the person just to make others see that you are better. Hmm. That is not how we go about it. So we have to be very, very careful with strength. Mm-hmm. And the strength in others will enhance your strength. Mm. Mommy, can you repeat that? The, Please. Strength in, the strength in others will help enha- enhance your strength when mm. you genuinely admire it and you support it. Okay. Okay. Not when you are envious of it and you are trying to steal it to try trying to outdo somebody. As Christians, we should we should never enter our minds to outdo other people just to bring them down. Mm. No, if anything at all, how they compete. I always say that I compete with myself. Mm. When I say I compete with myself, whatever I'm good at, how be- better can I do it? How better can I polish it? How can I get it to do to be better than what it used to be? Mm. Rather than looking at another person and saying that, how can I be like that person? Or I'm <laughs> envious of that person and I want to be. Of course, it's good to admire people and to want to um, get some of the good qualities in them. But so long as you are not doing it to belittle the person, or to outdo the person out of envy and jealousy, you are then on the right path. May the Holy Spirit help us so mm-hmm. that the strength in us, mm-hmm. we honestly see the strength in us genuinely. Mm-hmm. Ask for more strength and then go along with it and support other people's strength. Because when, by so doing, we said iron sharpens iron. That's right. When, That's by right. so doing, we will be sharpening ourselves and we'll be getting stronger to the glory of God. God bless you so much. So many themes and, and thoughts and things coming out. But first thing here, I'm coming to you because I could see your reaction. And one thing that was striking to me was what mommy was sharing. So you see somebody socializing with the youth and having a good time. And now you are conversing. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to like, I have somebody that say, what? You know, that's what I wanted to ask, but you know, I want to move on. President Henrietta, if you can respond, just tell me what you were thinking with the reactions I could see. I mean, as Mommy Abigail was talking, I could relate so much so with what she was saying. And I think um, it's important for us to 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 realize that it's, it is about honesty. It's being honest with yourself. Mm. I always say that even coming to Today's Woman every Monday, um, it's, for me, I, I can speak one-on-one, but speaking publicly or speaking with other people, it's it's a challenge. Mm-hmm. And so the amount of fans I have around me because I'm sweating because of the the, the just the nervousness mm-hmm. is the only if you can see. Mm-hmm. But I think it it when you realize and when you're honest with yourself and you realize that yes, maybe my weakness is not speaking mm-hmm. publicly, mm-hmm. then you realize that then you need to go to a source of help. Mm-hmm. And you have to go to a source to be able to give you the ability to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as ministers' wives, as we all know, we one of the roles that we play, we do have to minister um, to the women. We have to minister to the church. Mm-hmm. That requires us to stand in front of people. And so um, if you don't have the ability or you're not comfortable doing that, it's it can be very stressful for you. Mm-hmm. A lot of people run from that, op- run from the opportunity whenever they can, making excuses and things like that. But I think it's important for us not to allow our weaknesses to bring fear in us mm-hmm. or allow our weaknesses to cause us to run from um, means and ways in which the Lord wants to use us. But we should realize that we are weak in this area. So who do we go to for the source of our strength? And we go to our God. And so when you're able to realize that and you're able to spend time in prayer, you know, seeking his ability to give you the strength to be able to stand, then he does it Mm -hmm. and he never fails. And so um, one thing also I wanted to add on to when it comes to 
who or what allows us to be strong and what allows us to be to weak to be weak. Um, a lot of times experiences also play a very important role mm-hmm. in our strength and in our weaknesses. Um, some experiences, people go through certain things in life and it causes them to be strong mm-hmm. um, in certain aspects. And also people go through certain things in life and it causes them to be weak. Mm-hmm. So our experiences play a, a dramatic role in our strengths and in our weaknesses. I could say before coming into ministry, oh, I, I, I was strong as a deaconess, right? But as coming into a, as a minister's wife, I may be weak because I've never been exposed to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so experiences play a very drastic role. And then also the people around you also play a very important role and um, your strengths and your weaknesses. If someone continues to feed into you mm-hmm. that you're weak here, you're weak here, you're weak here, and you accept it, mm-hmm. then it also plays a role in your weakness. And then also if someone tells you that you're strong in this area and they continue to say you're strong in this area, then it also increases your strength. Mm-hmm. But it's important for you to know you for yourself. Mm-hmm. No one should tell you your strength mm-hmm. and no one should have to tell you your weakness. They can confirm it to you. Yeah, which is, is, is wonderful. Yes, they should confirm it to you, but you should know because sometimes, um, you know, by the grace of God, you be, may be able to stand and do something. Yeah. And in that moment, God was able to use you. And then you've taken it upon yourself and on your shoulder. This is, I can do this. This is my strength. And maybe <laughs> you may not be able to deliver the next time around. So we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to strengthen us where we are weak. We also have to pray, even in our strength, that the Lord will continue to give us what we need to increase. Mm -hmm. We should never be comfortable or stagnant in any area of our lives, even Mm -hmm. if we're strong in the area. But we should allow the Holy Spirit to to increase in us that we'll be able to do even more. Amen. (laughs) You know, it's interesting to me. When when we're in school, we had people that, you know, in SU could sing. And one lady approached, you, you know, my, my dearest friend, Mrs. Beth Entry, she can sing. I mean, hands down. So I said, could you please come and visit my church? I said, why? I said, ah, there's this lady in our church who's just killing us. Killing us. Can you come and say this? <laughs> I said, don't be me. She said, no, I'm not joking. Hey, she's just killing us and won't give anybody room. <laughs> Meanwhile, her voice is cockroach. I said, which one is the cockroach voice? Mercy, mercy, mercy. So like he said sometimes you think you are all that way you are not. I just remember that long ago story as to whether she visited her church to show her the difference. I won't be able to tell you the outcome of that story, but that was very funny. You are with us. Mama Doris, I'm getting ready to come with you. I want to acknowledge our people. You are with us. First of all, Henrietta, God bless you for that. You are with us on today's woman. We are talking about the SWOT strategy. We are drawing from the organizational SWOT analysis to make it very practical to our lives. And so far, we are learning a lot and it's been very interesting here. As always, we have Auntie Benedicta Bookman J says, she says, praise the Lord, family, praise the Lord. And today I want to plead with our people, share our link because we are having some struggles sharing it on COP USA radio because all the time it's not here. And, you know, we are trying to fit in the shoes we couldn't. And I have, um, she says, hello, my lovely mothers. Mrs. Sandra Wusu is here. She says, greetings to y'all, our beautiful first ladies. Thank God for another Monday. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Auntie Patricia Love, she says, my gorgeous first ladies. Thank you. We appreciate you for always being here with us. She says, oh, yes. It's always the strength that make them do it. Thank you. She says, hi, first lady Dora. You are looking great. So she's saying Chicago is good for you. (laughs) And she says, applying the word of God is a strength because it makes one come out to be different. God bless you so much. Auntie Nanako, she is a former, always here with us. She says, praise God, wonderful mummies. Praise God to you. Auntie Moginiko is also here. She says, good afternoon, wonderful women of God. Love this topic. We love it that you are always here with us. Kindly share our link and let it be a blessing. Thank you all. More doors. I was thinking about what our mothers have said when it comes to who or what makes us strong and weak. And first thing here, I was talking about the people around us. Could you look into expectations of the people around us? Because Mama Abigail was saying, unfortunately, most people are faking it. And I'm wondering why is that so? Because some, <laughs> and if you could look into that, even as you tell us your perspective of what makes us strong and weak. Okay, so I want to start from where Mama Henrita 
uh, ended by mm -hmm. saying that you go to the source. Mm -hmm. You go to the source of uh, where you get your strength from. Mm -hmm. And from our definitions, we've seen that the strength can be talent, something that we can do. So mm. who gives these talent and who gives these skills? Mm. So we are going to, if you read James 1, 17, it says that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the father of the heavenly light, yes. who does not change like yes. shifting shadows. Mm. So the source is constant. We should know that the source is constant. You can always go there and have it refill. Mm. If you feel that your source is down and maybe you need more strength, the father who gave it to you is still there up there waiting for you to feel it. Okay. People's perspective mm. can be deceptive and it can help you. Mm. People can be genuine, you know, people can be genuine to say about what they say. Okay. And others may not be that genuine. Okay. So for me, the best thing that you have to do is to know yourself. Okay. When you know yourself, you know the God who has called you and he is navigating your path. People will not necessarily mislead you. Okay. I remember when we were called into ministry, I was having my first degree. And we went for pastors and wives conference. Then this lady saw me and she said, Hey, I've heard that you are, you are, you are, I mean, can't you say, Matisse, who goes with the idea? Jaina, what the boy will come in a money ministry. So, in an answer, she wants me to end my education and come and help my husband to do ministry. So, I was so quiet. My husband realized and he asked me, What's happening? I told him that this Osime says this, this, this. And my <laughs> husband said, Do you want to go to school? I said, Yes. He said, So keep quiet and go. <laughs> so I kept my and I went. The following year, when we went to the same conference, minister they said, Hey, Miss Miko University. Ah. And I was like, ah. So you see, if I had stopped one year into it, <laughs> she was now starting. So was it Jenny? It wasn't. Mm. Whatever source that she was coming from, I cannot tell. Mm. But since then, I realized that it's not everything that people say that is truly the truth. Mm. So you yourself should know what you want and mm. do it. And as we've, we've already established that, it is God who gives the strength. Mm -hmm. And our God is constant. He's That's always right. there. Anytime you go to him, he's available to give you more. If you read Daniel 1 17, it said, To those four, I said, to these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. Yes. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams. Hmm. Another proof that shows that it, God is our source. Look at Samson. His strength was his physique, his physical strength. Mm -hmm. And it was given to him by God. That's right. And if you read, Exodus, yes, Exodus 35, from verse 30 to 35. Let me take it quick. It said, then Moses told the people of Israel, the Lord has specifically chosen Bazael, son of Uri, mm -hmm. grandson of all of the tribe of Judah. The Lord has filled Bazael with the spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of Right. So it, the source of our this then comes from God. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a master craftsman, expert in working with gold, silver, and bronze. He is skilled in engraving and mounting gemstones and mm. in carving wood. He is a master at every craft, every. Mm. And the Lord has given both him and all. Oh, oh, Ohilab, son mm -hmm. of Ahishab, of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach the skills. So now the complement aspect comes in here. Okay. So your strength can complement other another person's strength. So this one, it was God's own idea 
of bringing the two of them and they not only doing it with their hands, they have the ability to teach. Mm -hmm. So our strengths who can help us to teach others mm -hmm. and others can feed on us. Okay. We become, we also become a source. Yes, we also become a source where people can come and refresh themselves. So that is why we get mentors because the person has it. The person has learned it. Okay. So people can come, the strength can be a source for others. And God showed us here, he said, both of, um, of the tribe of that, the ability to teach their skills to others. Mm. The Lord has given them special skills as engravers, designers, embroiders in blue, purple, and scarlet thread of fine linen cloth and okay. weavers. They excel as draftsmen as well as designers. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. So who, who makes us? It is God. All right. God is the source. Yes. God is the source of our strength. So when somebody is directing you, you ought to also have time and go to the architect of your life mm -hmm. and ask him that, is it true? Is this person, what this person is saying, is it the truth? Mm -hmm. Or is it misleading? Okay. And that is why your innermost being also speaks to you, where the Holy Spirit will also direct you. Good as that thing may seem to be, it may not be the ultimate plan or fall into the plan that God has for you. Mm. So when you go to God, he will direct you. And we, we, we need to listen to ourselves. Mm. We need to listen to ourselves, yes. Because God has instilled us within our bodies. Mm. So when your body, your, your senses are telling you something it keeps on coming it keeps on coming i think you have to listen to it mm. and another thing that i want to talk about is that sometimes when people talk about our weaknesses if we listen to them we can come out that weakness can come out to be your strength mm. I remember, yes, I remember I used to be a chorus leader. I was not leading worship. So when we were called into the ministry, our first station, Pram Pram, our area head was Apostle Aqua. And anytime we went for pastors and wives meeting, any song I would stand and I would lead the chorus and people loved it. Then one day he told me that Doris, you know, you are not a chorus leader only, you can lead worship. I said, Papa, ask for worship, dear. I've not, it's not my area. He said, go and pray. Go and pray. And when you pray, you see that you have a faith. I said, oh, Papa, me, it's my weakness. I don't say, there is no weakness. Go and pray. You see, for me, I thought he was worried. So one day when we went for the meeting, he said, at our next meeting, Mrs. Sotuni Aku is going to lead worship. And that day, I didn't sleep. I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And after I had left the worship, everybody was like, wow. So it's true that you can lead the worship. So you see, the most important thing is that we should acknowledge the source of our strength. Mm. If you acknowledge God as the source, everything that has been put in you, whether it is knowledge that you have acquired, you've gone to school to learn. People mm -hmm. go to school and they learn, but they are not able to teach mm. or use it, utilize it. So once you are able to utilize it, then you should acknowledge the source. Mm. Sometimes as Christians, we are able to talk to human beings and we don't talk to God. Okay. So most often, yes, we are misled. But mm. believe you me, if you pray to God, God in his own wisdom will direct you. You will come into contact with people who will direct your life. For mm. me, it worked for me. How I, I ended at the training college was a mystery. I had finished mm. school. I didn't know what to do. Mm. Then I, I went to visit one uncle. Then I met this diploma. Then after talking to him, he just said, hey, you, you should be a teacher. Mm. If you go to the training college, you will be a good teacher. I said, what? There is nobody. There is no teacher in my family. He said, there is all, always the first time. Mm. I didn't, I went to Bolivia, did everything. I ended up uh, at the training college. 
And praise God, I came as at the best teacher of my time. Hmm. You see? Yes. Then after school, when I came, I came and I wanted to further my education. I, want, I didn't know which university I wanted to go. And for me, like the strength, my strength is cookery. I, if you ask me to cook, I will cook without any problem. Mm. So I remember I spoke to Auntie Abigail. I went to her and I said, sister, I want to go to I further my education, but I want to go and do catering. Then she said, Akosia, that's what you're cooking there. You don't have any problem. Why don't you look at your second best? Mm. Go and do it. You can always come back to the cooking because it is your strength. Mm. And thank God I listened. Mm. So I applied to the University of Ghana and I managing things where like I did management. And if you add the two together, I think it enhances me. Mm. So we, 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 should, we should know what we are or what mm. we are made of. Mm -hmm. The Bible says before we were formed, it wasn't when we were in our mother's womb. Before my father met my mother or my uh -huh. grandfather <laughs> met my mother, those things, before mm. God was planning somebody like me to come on this planet for specific reasons. Mm -hmm. So once it is God who brought me here, the master plan is there. Mm. So we should do overlook it and i want to emphasize is that whichever stage of life that you are and you can't find your way out mm. find time and go to god mm. he is the person who has the good and he says good and perfect it comes from him Amen. he will answer you and it will, you, it will be well with you enhance your strength mm. do well with your weaknesses come into collaboration with people and teach others, be a source for people, let people come to you so that the creation that God and the continuation of creation can come from us. God mm. bless us all. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Acknowledge God as the source of your strength. And one thing I love, you said, know what you are, what you are made of. God bless you so much for your personal experience. We are drawing so much from that. First Lady Grace, if you want to weigh in as well, we're looking at what, so we are talking about sources. We are looking at how we'll find out about strength, if you can talk on that. Thank you very much. Um, I think both Mama Abby and Mama Doris have referenced the fact that God is our source. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the fact that when God was creating man, he said, let us make man in our own image. That's right. The Bible says that in the image of God created he, uh, him, male and female created he, them. So inherently, as I uh, uh, indicated earlier, we came a full package. And so it is good, as Mama Dori said, to uh, uh, realize where the source of your strength is and where you might go to refuel. Mm -hmm. I also want to say that our temperaments also make us strong and can also make us weak. For instance, there are four main temperaments that we know about and each human being on mm -hmm. earth has a main temperament. Mm -hmm. And then there is what I would say, the minor temperament. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, attached to it and mm. I remember being in secondary school and discovering my temperament and being very very dismayed at <laughs> what I found mm -hmm. because I'm a choleric and I'm a melancholic and mm -hmm. that was the worst combination God could have <laughs> because Eric is out there you mm -hmm. know force it as it is be done with it and the melancholic is such an emotional person easily bruised easily broken why did you do this mm -hmm. but inherent in that set or combination he gave me is the ability both to be able to do mm -hmm. and to be aware of others and how they might feel mm -hmm. and so i have now come to so appreciate that he made me a claw mm -hmm. so that he's given me the ability to achieve something mm -hmm. and he's also made me aware not to step on toes unnecessarily mm -hmm. because of that sensitivity that comes from my melancholic side. And so each one of us, whether we are choleric, phlegmatic, sanguine, or melancholic, have attributes that give us strength mm. and attributes that 
can be a weakness. And so long as, uh, uh, I believe it's First Lady Henrietta that mentioned it, we self-appraise and we are very honest with ourselves, we'll be able to identify these sources. Also, the other things that can add to our strengths or our weaknesses is our nature and our, our environment. Mm -hmm. So when First Lady Dora was speaking, I, I love First Lady Dora very much because mm -hmm. uh, she says things with a bravado that often I exercise in my mind, but it doesn't come out of my mind. <laughs> when, when she speaks, she's like a mini mama Abby to me. And I love, you know, hearing them speak. So she was talking about the fact that um, um, being an outgoing person, mm -hmm. and wanting to talk, speak your mind as it is, and being in a society that uh, unfortunately is inherently chauvinistic, but what mm -hmm. like it is, mm -hmm. uh, patriarchal so how how then uh, are you able to uh be who you are created on the inside to be because society mm -hmm. is saying to you you cannot be this way this is not right so sometimes even though we have those deposits in us mm -hmm. that could enrich the fabric of human life we are uh, either made to push it in mm -hmm. or so criticized for exercising it that we tend not to do it anymore. So mm -hmm. the, the outgoing person might find that even when they have something to say, they do not contribute it because one, I'm a woman or two, I'm of the wrong skin color in the kind of environment that I find myself in. Mm -hmm. And so I will not uh, say anything at all. So what should be a strength then becomes a weakness, a weakness mm -hmm. because we become sort of introspective and not... Yeah. Uh, contribute as we should hmm. so uh, our nurturing uh, brings in an aspect of things thirdly our experiences in life mm -hmm. so if, if I have uh, say a strength to to give you know I'm generous I, I meet people and mm -hmm. I love them and I give generously but mm -hmm. I do that one day and I have such a bad experience from it <laughs> that I call back then yeah. That generosity, that ability to contribute richly to things mm -hmm. is going to be lost uh, to society. So those are things that impact on us being able to identify our strengths and uh, uh, on us being able to identify our weaknesses. So I, I, I loved uh, what Mama uh, Doris concluded with when she said that sometimes listening to what others have to say respect to where your strength and your weakness is can be a good thing yeah. in that sometimes you may have self-doubt but someone encouraging you and reinforcing what you know builds you up to be able to express it someone also making you aware when perchance you may not be self-aware that there is a weakness lurking there mm. for instance um, say just saying what i'm thinking not filtering it and then just, you know, saying it and it landed me into uh, <laughs> If someone sort of steps on my toe and says, you <laughs> try putting this differently. I'll, I'll share uh, an experience. Uh, we, we were having a meeting and someone was asked a direct question. They didn't answer the question. They beat about the bush. They spoke a lot of English. They used a lot of technologies, but still hadn't answered the question. <laughs> so I put my hand up and I went, Mr. Man, you've spoken a lot of English, but you've not answered the question. <laughs> and I could literally, it was on Zoom. I could literally feel the place go cold. Mm. And it's like, oh my gosh, I've said it, haven't I? I've done it again. <laughs> I've I've not sort of, you know, done a detailed analysis of my audience and the fact that it's a man that is speaking and I'm a woman and he might, you know, take this differently. So <laughs> of course, someone sort of laughingly, you know, told me, hey, you know, as for you, you said it. But I could tell from the way the person was going, you know, you know, and it was trying to tell me that I perhaps could have done it differently. Yeah. So at least now I've sort of taken that on board. I may be thinking it, but I'm unlikely to say it. <laughs> play towel and sort of have a way with the person and say you know what well, when you ask the question just go ahead and address the question and don't beat about the bush so much so we can always pick up feedback which would help us build ourselves up better so that our weaknesses are not always you know out in the public play thank you very much <laughs> so interesting <laughs> 
so 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 interesting i'm just thinking about a scenario that i got caught in some time back I, I I got in trouble because I said a word and I'm telling you what saved me was we had to pull the dictionary. <laughs> because it's like, hey, me know somebody else said, me know I used to wear the am I? And then it's, an elder had to save the day by pulling a dictionary and reading the definition of the word. And if that had it, I, I'm like, thank God you were thinking of your feet because I just was so shocked and amazed. I didn't know how to handle this. So I've learned also to be careful. Sometimes I have to throw a disclaimer and say, please, I want to beg and say, this is not my native language. So sometimes, forgive me, if I'm speaking, I may throw in a, 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 an English word here and there. It's because this is not my native language and I may not necessarily know how to use those words because it landed me in trouble. Had it not been that dictionary that day, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known how to defend myself because I guess the word meant something totally different to that person. So when you were saying that, that just came to my mind. But it's interesting that these things inform how sometimes in setting environments we, we watch ourselves. So thank you so much for bringing that dimension. First Lady Dora, please also let's hear what you also think about how we are able to identify our weaknesses and where our source is. <laughs> Thank you so much. I believe a lot has been said. And Dr. Grace, I love you too. I love the British accent. And sometimes I just love to hear you talk. Uh-huh. That's right. You have some tea over there. <laughs> <laughs> it is so beautiful to the ears. Um, our mothers, have, I believe, have said it all. I just want to throw in a little bit that uh, the grace of God is able to turn our weaknesses into strength, Amen. Uh, even spiritually and even manifest physically. When you look at uh, the story of Abraham and Sarah, obviously they had a weakness uh, looking at their ages. For Sarah, even for, young, for a younger person to get pregnant and carry a baby for nine months, Mm. It's not easy, but you see that because of the grace of God, mm. Sarah was able to conceive and, um, you know, carry a baby for, for nine months, same with Elizabeth. So it doesn't matter what the weakness is, God is able uh, to turn it into, into a strength. Mm. Um, you know, thinking about the source of, of, of weakness, what came to my mind was sin. Mm. Sin can be a source of weakness. That's right. Uh, yes, and, and just hundred over that the story that jumped me was that of Daniel when mm. they were trying to get something against him mm -hmm. they were looking so to see if they could find a mistake mm. anything that they could use against him mm -hmm. and I was just thinking what if he has slept with somebody's wife mm? you know what if yeah. he was corrupt what mm -hmm. if you're taking a bribe? <laughs> you know all these things uh could have come in and played against him so sometimes if you allow, if you play with sin, mm. if you play with sin, it can become a weakness. Now, um, the other sources, you know, we've talked about experience and all those other things. I just want to say that no matter what you do, people will criticize, you know, um, just listening. I was, I was just assessing myself and I could also identify with a lot of the stories that have been shared here. You know, sometimes you say things and you know, you get corrected and you just want to vanish. You know, you mm -hmm. wish you had not said that. And sometimes you hold that mouth of yours, just like, why couldn't you just keep quiet? <laughs> but, you know, Dr. Grace, I get it. When people are sometimes beating about the bush, it's like, oh my gosh, just say it. What is this? You know, just say it and let's move on. You know, just wasting our time. But thank God for the whole the spirit mm -hmm. because um, he's a source of our strength mm -hmm. he gives us the self-control that's mm -hmm. the difference mm -hmm. so sometimes you have that self-control and you're standing up quietly it does not mean you are weak you know people can say things that if you were had it not been for the holy spirit mm -hmm. you could say worse yeah you know things that will make them go kill themselves but <laughs> thank god for the holy spirit you try to control yourself mm -hmm. and and that is the beauty of of our hours, you know, it's it's so different. So I just want to say that for somebody out there whom you think that you are not, you know, you're not so strong. Mo Abigail said it that for her to even stand there, she 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 prays and all that. It's not easy. 
-hmm. no matter how vocal you are, no matter how good you think you are, there are certain tasks when given to you, you still need to go down on your knees and pray yes. to the source of the strength. The Lord, give me strength. I tell people, yes, I know I can sing. I mean, even if I'm sleeping, you wake me up to sing, I can sing. By the grace of God, I can. But still, if I'm invited to sing, I always get nervous. And when I say people don't believe it, you know, I'm like, I, I get nervous, I'm human. You know, I, I have to pray and ask God, Lord, please help me. Please mm. help me. Sometimes I even mess up my life mm. because you, you are so nervous. Mm. You have to understand that if Christ is the source and he's the one you are looking up to, mm -hmm. nothing else should matter. Awesome. And that is something that personally gets and keeps me going. Mm. I always say it doesn't matter which people are sitting where. If you tell me I should walk, you know, in go stand in the front, I walk majestically with no issues at all because I feel that um, whether I like it or not, somebody will definitely find something negative to, to say. And even the Christian though, you know, when you are, when you are shining, people always, always, always find something. It doesn't matter. Like somebody said one time, hey, yes, I'm so, 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 and I said, hey, Mr. So, I didn't, marry a, I didn't marry a pastor. I just married a man I fell in love with. I didn't ask nobody to, you know, I didn't ask God to call us. So maybe Menzo Sona, you, you know, maybe you have your own perfect people that are supposed to be as of mame. So maybe act a certain way that, you know, some of us are. <laughs> I'm trying to hear what you, did you just say somebody had the nerve and the boldness? Oh yeah, 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 yeah they said it. And I know this, I mean, at least she was bold enough, you know, to come say it. But I know some say it that they, they may not be bold enough um, to come say it to your face. But it's like, hey, what's the swab? I said, I said, me, you know, I didn't call myself. And, <laughs> <laughs> and in all honesty, too, I didn't go looking for Church of Pentecost pastor to begin with. I wouldn't have chosen the Church of Pentecost pastor to marry if I had a chance. You know, I just chose my man that I was in love with. And then along the way, God called us. <laughs> you know, if, if, if you think I don't qualify, then I'm sorry. But I'm here whether you like it or not. You know, and I'm going to be me. So uh yeah, that is the story. Mrs. If you don't like it, I'll too bad. So you know my just <laughs> it just so me that yes. I just oh my goodness. I love how you said it. Mrs. Mabeka, if you don't like it too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that is just how I said. We see, I miss my account. You know, whether you like it or not. Yeah. And, and 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 I'm sorry. I am not going to pretend or to. Mama Big Girl talked about fake, uh, you know, people and all that. I'm not going to pretend. Unfortunately, I'm going to be me. Mm. So just as you see it, it is God who is able to transform mm. and change people. But with that said, I cannot come and because I'm not also for my pretend maybe bow to you i will just be me i can't help it so we have to understand that no matter what it is people will criticize you and don't worry try to please god and that is what matters mm -hmm. you can give everything to, to people they will still criticize you mm -hmm. and so i've come to a point where criticism is that's it truly it means nothing to me it doesn't mean i wouldn't i wouldn't take corrections you know i will you know i will definitely take it but I will not let you put me down with your words. Um, mm. Amen. <laughs> Interesting. Well, how are we go? I'm just coming. So from Amidora. 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 Let me tell you, let me give you an icing to your cake. Mm. Maybe when this Saturday when we went for the wedding, that I was so happy dancing around. We met at one dickness and then she had a funeral. And at that time, Apostle was up there with you. So I was supposed to go. So, but I missed it. So when we met, I was like, oh, I should have been at the, your funeral. But because it's all oh, of mommy, don't worry. It, you are not the one that I was expecting. I was expecting Apostle. Oh. <laughs> yes. This Saturday. I need, I need to take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, at my, oh, I've, Dora, you, when you grow some of these things, you won't even answer. I didn't say anything. 
I just I didn't say anything, I just walked away. So when we got home, my husband was like, I could see an outside your car, Mr. Metepa, me buana and kebe me yapa. How can you say such a thing? <laughs> Oh, mercy I mean, and I mean, grace. So you see, don't worry. When you grow like me, you, you stop all those, uh, you mind them, okay? You are out of money, that is the most important. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> you know, but I love what you said. Truly, truly. I mean, you were not out there looking for a, a pastor. It wasn't, you know, part of your resume, your checklist, uh, the man I'm going to marry, one, pastor. No. You know, it's just God. He He knows what He's doing, and that that I love what you said is we shouldn't allow people's words to put us down. And it, it's it's sad sometimes when you know, as as we were saying, it's not coming from a place of iron sharpening iron, but just to put you down. You know, you, I, I quite remember one of the elders was sharing the story with me that this particular pastor, he he's a one man church pastor every sermon he know this one particular person every time will come with a sheet pastor when you said this i think it, so i think the thing was too much for the pastor he wasn't saying it and this is the person that is the highest type payer in that church and the pastor the last time he had enough he said you know i think you need to find a, a different church and a different pastor i said hey but church of Pentecost, by now you would have been called before he says no this guy it's like it came to a point where when he stands to minister and he sees him he's almost intimidated because it's like every single sermon it's not that oh pastor god bless you for the word and this is every single sermon he came with notes you should you said that you should have said this you should he said, i think you need to find a different church you're very new pastor i said wow hmm. mercy and grace elsewhere by now you would have been summoned then i don't know where your fate will be but people can push you and we are learning as we are growing not to really let them be the final say in our lives. God bless you so much. More Abigail, um, just listening to what First Lady Dora was saying, thank you so much, Momo Doris, for also you know sharing your personal experience for us to know these things are happening. And we just pray for the strength of the Holy Spirit to move on. I want us to talk about managing, even as we want to wrap, wrap up. How should, why should we know, we, we said it, about our strengths and our weaknesses, are there benefits to it? And how should we really manage it? Because everybody's kept saying, you need to know your strengths, you need to know your weaknesses. How should we manage those strengths and the weaknesses, Mami? Um, thank you. Um, I just want to add on to what Dora said. Dora, there is nothing wrong if you had wanted to marry a can also. <laughs> Nothing was so ever wrong. I mean, if, even before you got married, if that was what your inclination that you wanted to marry an Osofo <laughs> and God brought him your way. I, you see, there are certain things I don't apologize for. <laughs> and I think that is what we have to learn. Mm. You see, some things are so unnecessarily distracting that mm -hmm. you don't have to bring them, don't, don't pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. I remember one of my, my bosses told me that Abigail, whenever they are looking for somebody to do a diplomatic job, don't apply. Mm -hmm. He told me that don't, don't apply. And this was a white man, you know. Very bad at diplomacy. <laughs> <laughs> Ever apply for a diplomatic job? <laughs> and I, I, well, maybe it's a weakness, but me, I find it a strength. <laughs> and because I'm not diplomatic, I get away with so many things. But that doesn't mean you see not being diplomatic doesn't mean that you become you are rude or mm -hmm. you are saying things to hurt people mm -hmm. no you are only calling a spade a spade not a big spoon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we love it <laughs> so that is, that is I, so there are certain things that you shouldn't lose sleep over mm. 
And I could see her, if the person said she was expect, expecting faster, okay. <laughs> there are other people who were expecting you. Expecting you, yes. You know, you know as from my, my house, wherever you come there, you are always expected. <laughs> Just, you should have told her that oh my my sister was expecting you. Hmm. That one would have said something. To her. You know, and I think we are we are we are talking about these things, but it also tells us that we have to be mindful of how we hurt people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some of the things we say to people, you see, people just open their mouth and say anything at all just because they feel like saying it. No. Mm-hmm. You don't do that. Think about the feelings of the other person. Even if you are expecting another person instead of her, what is wrong with shutting up? <laughs> Mercy. And just saying, oh, oh, I'm, I, I, I understand or something. You see, we, we, have, to, we have to be very empathetic. Mm-hmm. Put yourself in the place of the other person. How is the other person going to feel? Mm-hmm. Today I, I visited one widow home and as we were talking and she was narrating how god has even come into her life at this time that she's going through all those challenges Mm. i just looked and i said the holy spirit strengthens us and god is always there to help Mm. but human beings are thoughtless oh Hmm. human beings can be very 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 thoughtless and they think that hurt us. Mm-hmm. When it comes to that way, like we have all said, we turn back to the source for strength. Mm-hmm. So how do we manage our strength and our weakness? There are so many people who are always apologizing for their strength. <laughs> Somebody will do something well, you see here, you say, oh, I did you, we had you. Mm-hmm. Hey! Yo, thank you. What happened to thank you? <laughs> yes, you know that the thing that you did, you, you did well. You yourself, you can tell yourself that what you did, you did well. And somebody is just endorsing it. Oh, so sister, this thing that you did, you did it so well. Oh, thank you very much. Please, I'm asking for more grace to do better. Something like that. That's one. Some some false humility. Hmm. I am not like that too, but hmm. some people will say grace, so meanwhile they don't mean grace. <laughs> Mama, you, you, have done, you have done well on the oh, it's, it's grace, so, but deep within them they know they, they know that they are not acknowledging the grace of God. <laughs> Mommy, because if you don't say that, then maybe you are pompous, you are arrogant, you know. So that means you want people to you that is plan. You are judging yourself by what people think of you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you see, because me, there are certain things that I'm very good at. When you see me, when I do it, and you say, "I say, oh, thank you," <laughs> I'm asking for more grace to do better. But I know, I know that I know how to do that thing, and I've done it. <laughs> so, are we now going to go through that? So, managing our, our strengths and our weaknesses, it still comes down to this honesty business. Mm. You see, when when you know that you are good at something, okay. do it. Bible says that whatever your hands find, do it as unto the Lord. So you know that this thing you are able to do it. You do it and you do it well. I, I always say that, you see, when God created uh, the, the, the story of creation, every day, God, the supreme being, the overall, the creator, the one who is in charge, will lift it up and look at it and say that it is good before he goes on to the next day. Mm. So that evaluation, God has put it, it's inbuilt in us. Okay. So as we evaluate ourselves honestly, honest assessment of ourselves, mm. we are able to know that these are our strengths. Mm. And then we are also able to know that these are our weaknesses. Some of the weaknesses, we may not be aware of them. Mm-hmm. But God in his own way will let somebody or something happen for you to know that this is a weak area of yours. Mm-hmm. Like my boss told me that I'm not good at di- diplomacy. <laughs> I decided to 
make something good out of it. I said, he said, I shouldn't have applied for a diplomatic position. I said, okay. I said, yes, boss. And then I told myself, so it means that I am not diplomatic. Mm. Is it good or bad? <laughs> okay. I can turn it to something good. Mm. And I, I, I just continued praying about it. And I mean, as, and now old age has come in to help me. You see, when you are old, you can say so many things and get by with it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't apologize for it. Everybody say, hey, yeah, 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 mommy, mommy, yeah, now some, then, but then you are able to get the point across. Mm. So I think w- managing it, you are, you are, when you are honest about what you have and what you don't have, you'll be able to tell which ones you should go along with. But the other thing is genuinely, genuinely, genuinely going before God. You see, sometimes we are, we, we, we think God, God is like, uh, God doesn't know us, but he created us and he knows every step of the way. He even knows what we are going to do ahead of us. And he's standing there waiting, hoping that we will do the right thing. But even if we don't, he doesn't throw us away. He still embraces us so long as we come back to him and allow him to move us. So let us, if we can, if we will pretend with anybody, Mm-hmm. Still, let us not pretend with <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it, it's a waste of time. It, it, it doesn't make sense. It, <laughs> it, it, I don't know. It's like a child hiding something behind her. You, you are the older person and you know what the child is hiding behind her. And then she's trying to tell you something else. It, it's a waste of everybody's time. Mm-hmm. So please, let us be genuine with ourselves and Go genuinely before God. Mm. You see, sometimes this thing I was talking about admiration and acceptance and all those things. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you see somebody doing something and naturally you get envious. Mm-hmm. Naturally, you get envious. Hey, how can she do it so well and I can't do it? Go mm-hmm. to God in prayer. You say, God, my sister is doing this. My brother is doing this. And she's doing it so well. Honestly, God, I'm envious. Mm. But that is not the way I should go about it. So mm. please change my heart and mm. teach me how to go about it. Mm. Let me let me honor my brother. Let me honor my sister in mm. what he or she is doing. And Lord, what you want me to do, enhance it in me. Mm. Let us be genuine. You see, mm. when we are genuine before God, He loves us even more because He has such, He realizes, He tells Himself that. This child of mine is not pretending. This child of mine is genuine. This child of mine genuinely needs my blessings and I'm going to pour it down her throat. Mm. And God will do it for us. So if we want to manage our strengths and our weakness, let us be genuine. Let Mm. us be genuine. And let us continue to rely on God. You see, and these things about what people think about us, what they will (laughs) say about us, and all those things, some of them, you know, there are things that have made me cry. Hmm. And when I have cried, I end up at the feet of Jesus and I say, oh, this thing has hurt me so much, I don't know how to manage it. Let me leave it at your feet and please hmm. help me with it. But I don't want this person to let me cry again. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I tell God. I said, I don't want this person to let me cry again. Never in my life does this person make me cry. If you, God, make me cry, I understand. But another human being making me cry, Mm. why? Mm -hmm. So take the head out of it and deliver me out of it and help me. When we do that, you feel a relief. And you see, it takes time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes takes a long time Mm -hmm. for you to get the head out of you continue praying. That is how we manage our strengths and our weaknesses. People will say things that will hurt, hurt us, but I love what I'll say. The master praises. The master praises. At the end of the day, we want the praise of our master, not the praise of Gifty, not the praise of Dora, not the praise of the creator. We want the praise of God. So the master praises what I mean. And if we look at it that way, we will genuinely 
be managing any phenomenon because we will not be doing it ourselves, but the Holy Spirit will be doing it. Very, very powerful. Thank you so much, Mommy. I, I remember a scenario where there, there was an occasion and somebody was there and one person said, oh, wow, you look so beautiful, elegant. So I said, ah, I dress it in I then you who call President Hall. You know, so the same thing, <laughs> <laughs> the same thing somebody is admiring and praising and another person is putting it down so when you said the master praises what am I you know sometimes and, women, and women for that matter what are women <laughs> may God have mercy you are with us on today someone who would like you to know that the views express our own personal view in no way shape or form would that be the collective view of the church of Pentecost and I see auntie Ryder Donk or Dickens Ryder Donk she said God bless you mummies for this program God bless you too auntie Ernestina Taylor said this topic is just awesome our mummies are wonderful God bless you mummies God bless you too and kindly share a link and let it be a blessing also Auntie and it's um and it's not she says very interesting and Auntie Patricia laughs she says jealousy. Nicholas Deborah Besson is on here. God bless you. It was good to see you yesterday at the youth service. Um, I think that has been wonderful, but we're gonna just go around and take our closing. And even in your closing, if you wanted to talk to us about the management, you could go for it. So I'll start with First Lady Grace Asantidia. If you want to give us your closing, it's great. I know God willing, next week we'll continue. So it's good a point to just end for today. Dr. Grace, your closing. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you to all uh, my mommies on here. As always, I've learned a lot. Um, I think that as human beings, it's uh, always important that we are self-aware. Um, I remember as a teenager, my mom uh, teaching me about the issue of body odor and telling me how if you would always learn to smell yourself, <laughs> there's no point uh, where others would pick up body odor off you. And that is a principle that I apply not just for physical hygiene, but across board so that if I'm always self appraising, if I'm always self aware, it will lend to less embarrassment, it will lend to uh, being in situations where God's glory is made known instead of me bringing, you know, uh, uh, things that would not glorify him out in the public. So it's important that, as um, we've said, we learn to identify the things that make us strong, the mm -hmm. things that make us weak, and what the contribution of others are towards both. So um, where we learn that others are deliberately putting us down mm -hmm. for what actually our strengths, we learn to stand for what God has made us to be. We learn to refuse to let those words or actions of others impact us and take away from us or detract uh, us in our pursuit of the excellence that God has placed uh, in us. And where weaknesses are being identified that um, we take on board constructive criticism um, is not about being put down by, it's about valuable information that would help the individual uh, become the better uh, aspect of themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think that where I have then uh, taken these on board and I've learned to identify what is my strength and what is my weakness, then the next step that would logically need to be taken is that where I find that there are triggers or confounding factors that might expose that weakness, which I'm still by the work of the Holy Spirit working on to better or minimize its negative effect, I am more cautious mm -hmm. so that if, if I'm in an environment, so say if, if my issue is with uh, honesty or integrity, um, when I'm asked to be the church bearer or, or the church uh, treasurer, I, I would politely decline because that is not <laughs> uh, 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 where I'm taking that which is not mine. So it, it calls for a lot of self-awareness and self-honesty to be able to say of this, I have the grace of God to do. Of that, I am still trusting the grace of God to get there and therefore apply caution uh, in all those uh, aspects of our lives. So thank you very much for having me on this evening. I've learned a lot as always, thank you. God bless you so much. You know, it's like telling the cat to watch the mouse, you know, or 
or telling a guy who has weakness with women to watch your daughter if you're traveling you just have to say auntie please find somebody else to watch your daughter you know? <laughs> so, so i like that aspect of it god bless you so much first lady dora give us your closing please <laughs> thank you dr grace <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been awesome. And I've also learned a lot. Um, in closing, I do agree with what Dr. Grace said that know what you can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. I believe as, as believers, we've been called and given a task and you cannot do everything. You know, search within yourself, be honest with yourself and also understand that it is God who gives the strength. That is where uh, he is our source of strength. And whatever task he has given you, the angel of the Lord told Gideon that go in this thy strength, hmm. meaning that God has given us some strength. We are not of the same breed. Mm -hmm. You know, some are stronger than others, mm -hmm. but whatever strength that the Lord has given you, go in that, that strength. Mm -hmm. Believe that the grace comes from above. Mm -hmm. It is not in your own strength. When you look at the story of David and Goliath, you know, David could have looked at his little strength and said, oh my goodness, I cannot do this. Mm. But he knew that even with this strength that I have, God is still able to use it to do something great. Absolutely. So do not despise the strength that God has given you. Do not compare your strength to other people's strength. Mm -hmm. Understand the great that we have and know that the little that you have been given the task that has been entrusted in your hand, go in that strength and believe and acknowledge that God is, is, is the source and he will go with you. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. Do not despise. Do not compare. God bless you so much, First Lady Dara. First Lady Henrietta, we'll take your closing. Auntie Patricia laughs. She says, well spoken. And she says, boundaries. God bless you so much. First Lady Henrietta. Yes, God bless you all for your contributions. Um, I've been blessed today. And the only thing I want to leave with us um, as we close and to the listeners is that um, just piggybacking off of what our mother Dora said, that we shouldn't put ourselves in a box, mm -hmm. um, either within our strengths and also within our weaknesses. But we should allow the Holy Spirit, who is our continual source of strength, to continue to cause us to increase in areas in where we find ourselves strong. And then also go to him in areas where we find ourselves weak, that we will not be conformed and comfortable in that weakness, but we will move for increase. And I think it's important for us. Um, I think we've hit on it on the nail and we're going to reiterate it. Let us continue to self reflect ourselves, check ourselves um, and check areas in our lives where we are strong and areas of our lives where we are weak, but also not allow that weakness to consume us because mm -hmm. in scripture, the Bible says that when I am weak, then mm -hmm. I am strong. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to say, may God bless us all. Amen. 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 Second Corinthians, God bless you. Chapter 12, seven to 10 NIV. Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God. So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Verse eight, three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Nine, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, harshest persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. First Lady Henrietta, God bless you so much for looking at it. We shouldn't allow the weaknesses to consume us. God bless you so much. One more doors, please will take your closing as well. Mommy, please, you are mute. You are mute. Thank you. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. So thank God for this great opportunity that 
we've learned about our strength and our weaknesses and we've acknowledged the fact that our strength comes from on high, mm. the father who is constant waiting for us to come to him. And I will, I will also want to end from where Mama Henry, today, I'm, I don't know, I'm picking on Mama Henry. I, I like the uh, calmness. Uh -huh. Later when I grow, I'll become as calm as she is. <laughs> and she says something. <laughs> you know, I admire quite people, people who are cute. Yeah, I wish I was, but Days that I decide to be cute, that will be the day that I will, I will end up uh, getting more trouble. But <laughs> I want us to look at the prodigal, son, the prodigal son. He did some evaluation of himself. So when you read Luke 15, 11 to 32, mm -hmm. the son was weak. He was wasteful. You know, he, that was his weakness and extravagant. He took all that he had from mm -hmm. the father the wealth and everything and went there and squandered everything. Mm. But I like the way he came back to his senses mm. when he saw that he had done something wrong. The Bible says that he said, I said, oh, I'll get up and go back to my father. Definitely. After doing the assessment, he saw his weakness. He mm. didn't stay in his weakness. He said, I will go. I will go to the father. The father is still waiting for us. When we go to him, he will, he will, he will, he will welcome us mm -hmm. and mold us and call us and use us. So this guy got up, accepted his weakness, accepted his wrong, and he, he went to his father. And the good book says that when the father saw him, he was so happy. Mm -hmm. Our heavenly father would be so happy to see us come to him with our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. How do we manage uh, our strength too? You know, we've said that the strength comes from God. Mm -hmm. so, and But you have to develop it. You can't say that I have it, so I wouldn't develop it. You mm -hmm. have to be abreast with time. Now, with technology, even when you are selling, either too you could put it in a store and somebody will. Now people are going on Instagram, they are selling. Mm -hmm. doing promotions and all those things so if selling is your 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 strength then you should be abreast with time mm -hmm. know what technology is bringing you and fix yourself there continue to use the strength whatever thing that you have if you don't use it it will go still use it or lose it <laughs> yes you can say that. yeah you, you lose it it's like a gift of prophecy if you have that gift and you don't utilize it over time you see that you cannot even hear from God. Mm -hmm. If you are a chorus leader, if you are the one who leads the chorus for all angels to come in and you don't learn the present song and you keep on singing the old songs, when you come and stand there, people will show you. <laughs> I remember there was this chorus leader in Kofodia. Those days that we used to go for general council meeting, mm -hmm. anytime we, uh, it was time for chorus, we were all waiting for it. He comes and say, Webe, 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 only webe, and the whole place will be tired. That is his gift. <laughs> and we, we, we loved him. We, we really loved that guy. <laughs> he will use only one song, and everybody will dance. Huh? When somebody is going to change, oh, you see. So if you're a chorus leader, <laughs> you need Mommy, to. Mommy, did you nickname him webe? Did you nickname him webe? <laughs> Oh, his name. Been, I don't really know his name. But one time, you know, I mean, yes, 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 but if you say webe, everybody understand who we'll dance with the webe will love the time and who is yes, only webe will do all the magic for that was his strength. And we really loved him. I even checked on him recently and I hear his past done. May his soul rest in peace. You see, so look, all these years, I still remember Webe because he used his strength. Mm. Hallelujah. We should use, when you use it, it sharpens up and it grows. Then find a niche for yourself. Mm -hmm. the strength, within the strength, find a niche for yourself. Don't copy people. Mm -hmm. Although, um, we all can sing, but you can see that 
um, when uh, Elder Kwesi Meku is singing, his mm -hmm. song, he has a niche. Mm -hmm. He has a way of singing. Mm -hmm. When um, uh, uh, um, other people, I, I, other people are also singing, Elder uh, Kwesi Meku found a niche in the music in that he maintained it. Mm -hmm. And now we are, whether you like it or not, we are all recognized. Uh, accepting his way of music. Mm -hmm. So he, he his strength was music, mm -hmm. but he found a niche, and the niche is pain of mm -hmm. what are your strengths? And which particular way are you going? Mm -hmm. Try to uh, create a niche, and that makes you unique. That makes you under, uh, outstanding. That makes you come out. Then, then as true complacency, mm -hmm. when you have the strength, don't be complacent. No, don't be complacent. Complacency is one of the weaknesses that draws us inward. So you have to enhance it. It's something that God has given you. You have to enhance it. And the weakness that are, don't give up. If you have a weakness, don't give up. There's this song that says, don't give up yet. I'm in control, watching over. Don't give up. You just do it. People will, people will criticize you. People some people they criticize without knowing even your background mm. because for me i stayed with boys all my life all my life i stayed with boys so me moving with men i don't have any problem rather when i move with women i have problems <laughs> but when i'm moving i feel comfortable <laughs> that is me. so if you sit somewhere and you always see me in the in the uh, comfort of men and you think that oh where they are up per mem and i Oh, how, how? Mm -hmm. because I stayed with men for how many? 20 something years. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. only good thing that my daddy did was that he took me to a girl's school. Mm -hmm. He made sure I went to a girl's school for eight years, even to neutralize the boy. I remember times that my, had, my father had to sit me down and tell me, mommy, who your ba? <laughs> you see, mommy, who your ba? <laughs> so I know who you're buying me. He won't then that I'll sit down and think about it. Say, into me, your banty, then I mean yeah. The next time you are playing football, Charlie, come, 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 me and I'm a five, I did not me bobo. So sometimes people criticize us, they don't even know our background. Uh -huh. They don't know what we the emotional strength that we go through uh -huh. to become what we are supposed to be. People, mm -hmm. so many people didn't accept me because you know, men they say the way it is. Mm -hmm. So I move with them and we say things. Like that. So when you come to the girls' fold and you say they are offended, they be an mm -hmm. of food. Why don't I go to my men and converse? We talk and we don't have any problem. So you see, <laughs> you don't give up, build on it gradually. <laughs> so when I became soft mommy and I was uh, uh, dealing with the young girls, it was so difficult. Mm. I, I I was I found it so comfortable de dealing with the young guys. So that is it. So don't give up. Work on yourself and 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 open up and accept criticism. A constructive ones. Some mm. people they've seen your strength, but mm -hmm. genuinely they see that Akosia, this thing with you will worry you. Mm. And if it is coming from a corrupt source, please, please, or people who have passed that path when they are telling you, please. Okay listen to them mm. then finally educate yourself mm. as mama i think mama dr Gray said it educate yourself in the weakness mm. if you don't know how to do something but you need it i think you can educate yourself to enhance it, it may not be perfect for me if you give me a thread to sew people can sew straight <laughs> yeah but I, can, I can use my mouth to Hmm. I think, okay. I think we are a little bit stuck with the internet, but it's it's been, oh, okay. Mordoris, you can continue. You're muted. Uh -huh. All that I'm saying, all that I'm saying is that know yourself. Mm -hmm. If you know yourself very well, you, you, you know what you can do and what you cannot do. Mm. Enhance those things that you cannot do. Educate yourself for your weakness. By the end of it all, go to God for strength and it will be well with you. May God bless us all. Amen.
Amen. I was interested about the needle and thread thing, Mama Doris, that she was saying. <laughs> when the internet went off, I was like, yeah, I'm interested okay. in that. <laughs> the thread and the needle. Mm -hmm. My, my um, life skills, those times, training college, we do sewing. Mm. And if you, if you, when you draw the line for me and you give me the thread and you say I should sew, by the time I get to the middle, either it will go up or it will come down. I can't sew straight. You see, but there are some people, they don't even need the line. Mm -hmm. They can sew and it's so as if it is uh, this. Sewing isn't my, I can't even say it's my weakness. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is it. That is the truth. I can't sew. My friend Odako will sew and it is so neat. She can mm. use her hands to do garden. I can't do it. Mm. Mine is to cook. I can dream of the, the cookery and uh, practicals and it will come out well. Mm. Why don't I form a niche there and go and compete with somebody? No, I won't. That one day, I won't. Those who know me, they will, I won't do it. Cry. Me, I mean, who? I won't have my own cry. Mm -hmm. I will do what I can do and do mm -hmm. its best. Mm -hmm. Allow other people to do the then we'll complement each other. So mm -hmm. know you if you are soft mommy and your voice is only auto, it cannot sing treble. Why should you go and lead a uh, worship? And then crown I won't say why? Maybe <laughs> yours is not the worst. Yours is something else. It's not by force to say we are of my mommy to police. I when I was an area head, well, I always told my ass of mommy, look for what you can do best. <laughs> Mama Rita, it's true. Do they have to put Sunday at uh, Easter convention? Then they put you there. Who bang in a who kiss in a low court? Who how will be? Some a dickness can do it and do it perfectly well and will feel the presence of God. Maybe yours is searching the word of God and rightly dividing it. Charlie, that is your niche. Go there and do it. If yours is none of the but, but the decoration, do it. If yours is none of them, but keeping quiet, keep quiet and sit there. Good news you, you mm. see? So don't force yourself. Don't kill yourself. Oh, no, we need you alive. Just fix yourself where God has placed you. Do it and do it well, mm -hmm. and you outshine. So I pray that we know ourselves, the things that we can do mm. very well. People are multi-skilled. They can do so many things. Hallelujah. But if you cannot do it, please don't go and embarrass yourself. Stay where you are, where the love of God can reach you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. I, I feel better because I have a sewing machine, but I don't know how to sew. So, ah, so you can't do Hermes. I said, I can't do it. <laughs> So now I don't feel bad. <laughs> Mama Abigail, please, we'll take your closing. But, you know, um, just, Mommy, as you're closing us, Mama Doris says something about know your niche, even even as a, as a mommy and also, you know, being able to say, look, worship is not my thing. So I'm trying to look at a superior asking you to do something that you know is not your niche. And mommy, you spelt it out. We shouldn't be worried about what people think. How do you politely decline and say, look, I think that mommy said it. Maybe I know my voice and I won't be able to do worship and stuff like just looking at, okay, they said she should do worship. She declined. She should come and preach. She declined. Then what can you do in an environment where you are not consulted? You know, sometimes nobody tells you anything. You just see your name is there. You're supposed to do this. How do you, I was thinking about that one more Doris. So how do you politely decline such things, even as you're closing us to? Thank you very much. This sewing business is an issue for so many people. <laughs> yeah, I know how to thread the machine. I can, I can thread the machine. But that is the end of the story. <laughs> after threading the machine, after thread, after, because after the threading of the machine, hey, my my uh, needlework teacher was so uh, yeah about it, so I know how to do it. After threading the machine, and then the other one is drawing. My my art teacher was always happy when I had forty seven percent in art. 
because hey, Abigail, today you have done well because I'm above 40. <laughs> <laughs> but I was never above 50 in art work. <laughs> but you see, later on when I grew up, then I was talking with somebody and the, I was describing something to the person and what you do. The person said, ah, oh, you're very artistic. I said, me? He said, no, art is not just drawing. Having the mind about it and being able to tell somebody to do it is also a type of art. I said, I asked for that one. I'm very good at it. But drawing, uh -uh, I don't get there. So yes, so this, um, don't worry about your machine. Maybe Rasmus will come and use it. But if it doesn't, thank you. Yeah, for the closing, mm. and I just want to address the issue that you brought up about knowing your niche or building on your niche and then being called to do something else. Especially in our church, we don't, people don't necessarily ask for what you can do or it has pleased the Holy Spirit and asked you, asked you to do this, so you are asked to do it. And that is it. It, when, when it comes to something like that mm -hmm. and you are called and there is nothing you can do about it, that is where I believe what the Bible says that when you are called in front of people to answer on an issue and you have no clue, the Holy Spirit will come to us. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is the time I will call on the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, there's nothing I can do about this. Mm. He knew that this is not my area. He told us. And he will do it. He never disappointed us in that area. So long as you genuinely knew that this one day, it was you didn't maneuver your way there. Mm. It was dropped on you. And then ceremoniously, Holy Spirit come and take over. And you come and do it. But when you know you are you are of man. Your husband is the one preparing the, the program for the, the, the meeting. And then you go and say, oh, today, also today, uh, in my position, I have to be the worship team. When you know that you are not good at the worship <laughs> that's when you are creating problems for yourself. <laughs> Those are the ones that you know. If you have a hand in it, take yourself out of the one that you know is your weakness. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a hand in it, and it, I mean, dropped on you, Ask the Holy Spirit for direction. Mm. That is what I would say for that. Okay. But for my closing remark, I just want us all to bear in mind that God loves us anyway. Mm. Thank you. No matter what our strengths are, no matter mm. what our weaknesses are, He loves us anyway. Mm. He doesn't throw us away because we have this friend or we have this weakness. He knows us. Mm -hmm. He accepts us and loves us anyway. Mm -hmm. So when we, we know that we should feel comfortable with whatever we find ourselves to be, that doesn't mean that we accept our weaknesses and say, maybe I'm afraid the end of our year, yeah, dear pal. <laughs> How is that a good resume? <laughs> but then out of love for God, mm. we want those weaknesses to turn into strength. Mm -hmm. As we have already said, you go to your source. Concerning our weaknesses, despite the fact that we all have weaknesses, let us allow the Holy Spirit to them. Mm -hmm. This song about I love it so much. Because mama That part about being like Christ. How will Christ, you see, and uh, Peter put it right in, he said, so that we will be examples of Christ. Even in our weakness, even in our weakness, 
if we want to be examples of Christ, we can turn it around mm. for us to portray the Christ likeness in us. And in all that we have talked about, humility should be paramount. Mm. Humility should be paramount. If you have the strength, be humble about it. Okay. Be humble about it. The fact that God has endowed you with that strength, it is grace. Mm. So humbly present that strength. Those of us who met Pastor Matthew face to face and actually sat at his feet. That man, you see, he he emanated humility. Mm. You see him and you know that the man is humble. Mm -hmm. And he was a very strong and firm person. Mm -hmm. You just give us a pastor and then you will see how firm this man is. Mm -hmm. When he hears something that this man has misbehaved, he's going with the, the vehicle that is coming to take your things away because you are not fit to be a pastor because of that thing mm -hmm. that you have done. Mm -hmm. But this man was a, man, a humble man. You see, let, let humility be part and parcel of us. Mm -hmm. So that in your strength, you portray the strength of God through humility. And the same humility is what will make you accept your weakness. Mm. So that you do not pretend to be what you are not. Mm. But you allow the Holy Spirit to work. Let us learn to say no and yes at the right time. Okay based on the direction that we get from God. When, even sometimes when it is your strength and you can do it better, Holy Spirit can tell you that stand aside and let another person go and do it. Mm -hmm. Please, let us listen to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And when he tells us and we obey, we get so many good things out of it. Mm -hmm. May God bless us and help us so that our strength and our weaknesses, through all of them, we will still be able to let the world know that we serve a loving God who loves us no matter how we are. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, um, Auntie Patricia. Says self reflection and self awareness helps us to grow. My dearest husband is here and. He was laughing to the thing about the sewing because <laughs> he can even thread the sewing machine and I can. And, <laughs> and he says, first ladies, maximize your potential. He's laughing at us, but I think he's just being interesting. Thank you all so much. This has been a very self-reflective episode calling all of us to really really take the time to know ourselves and to acknowledge god as our source of strength and to go with him and i love what mama Abigail, you said that no matter what our weaknesses are god loves us god accepts us and if you're looking for acceptance now we know where to go and if you're needing to confirm and affirm that we are loved no matter what it's been out there god loves us god is with us thank you all so much and more doris please i'm getting ready for you to pray with us and want to acknowledge all our people and kindly share our link you know today we had a little bit glitch but thank you for bearing with us and the prof is not here today the prof is with his dearest wife and he called me and he says praise ye the lord it's a code and i got the code and i said he says i'm happy i said why wouldn't you be happy so prof is in the motherland i i am trying to see Anna. <laughs> Prophet oh, in Ghana. Yes, Mommy. You tell him to contact those the Ghanaians in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mommy. He called me and he was singing some songs. Nyami Yodo. I said, Why would you sing Nyami Yodo? <laughs> Why would you sing Nyami Yodo? So, yeah, he, he's in the motherland. So, Hi to first lady, uh, uh, Dinah, that is uh, Lady Dinah for us and the whole family. So, Prof, enjoy your stay. Mommy, please, we'll take the prayer. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you so much for your goodness and for your loving kindness. We bless you for your goodness because it is you who have instilled our strength in us. 
And human as we are, we have our weaknesses. But despite all these, you love us and you continue to uphold us and, and direct our path. We pray committing ourselves into your hands. Father, we pray that you continue to enhance our strength. Give us insight, wisdom, mm -hmm. understanding as to what we should do to our strength. Mm -hmm. Give us that spirit of humility that you had despite all that you had within you you were so humble and could mm. relate very well with everyone we pray for that spirit in the name of jesus Amen. if lord there has been times that people have criticized us so we are no more using our strength we pray that you give us the grace to mm. bounce back in jesus name. Mm -hmm. we also pray that the holy spirit will sap every weakness in us in mm -hmm. the mighty name of jesus Amen. but the holy spirit will ginger us up and give us the innermost strength so that we can even come out of our weaknesses that our weaknesses will be strength to enhance your kingdom mm -hmm. we pray for ourselves and we pray for our viewers if there are people who are going through difficulties, mm -hmm. you are the source of all comfort. We pray that Lord, you meet us at that point of need in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Heal those who are sick. Heal those who are going through in any emotional trauma. Heal mm -hmm. our homes. Lord, bless the work of our hands. Mm -hmm. Above all, let us say where your love will find us. If you are going through anything that is besetting us, that is drawing us from you we pray that your hands will escort us to your love and lord will stay under your feet we commit this the rest of the week into your hands walk us through this week let this week come with blessings supernatural blessings reveal yourself unto us let us know you well so that lord when we come next week we'll come with testimonies in our hearts and on our mouth to say that offer truth we have a god who gives strength to the week. We bless you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. So we want our viewers to know that, you know, our, our episodes are on YouTube, so you can subscribe to us. Today's woman, COP USA Radio, look at us up on YouTube and subscribe to us. Follow us on, you know, Facebook, follow us on Instagram. And, you know, God willing, next week we'll continue the discussion on the SWAT, you know, strategy. We're going to look at the opportunities and the threats. So, uh, again, we want to apologize for those who are having trouble trouble you know following us today but subscribe to us on youtube and you never miss any of our episodes first lady grace of Centuria, god bless you so much we're blessed by your insightfulness first lady dora thank you for sharing your practical experiences with us first lady Henrietta, it's great to have you always here thank you for you know how you add to it with also your calmness more doris you say it as it is and we love you for that and more while we go i love it when you say you will never apologize for certain things i'm loving it Thank God for the variations all multiplied to give us a great episode. God bless you all. And please have a pleasant, 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 you know, week. And Elder Sam, God bless you. And we are praying for a safe travel back. And Auntie Sandra also says, God bless you all so much. God bless you so much too. And my dearest husband said, God bless you all for the wonderful program today and because you know it's the weekend after the wedding every marriage mm, you have to prove that still you've got it in you so let's all have fun and congratulations again to auntie stephanie and elder and Nyamicha. congratulations and everybody bye